Hello friends, we are back with the first section of chapter 10, Jefferson's The Period. As you studied, uh, Jefferson won, won the presidency after a very hot debated uh, elections. And as you know, we in the previous lessons, we studied about uh, the Federalists, how they dominated politics under the presidency of John Adams, John Adams as the second president of the United States. Today, we are going to uh, focus on what happens after President uh, Jefferson takes the office and how the Rep uh, Rep Democratic Republicans reduce the power of federal government. As you can see, we have the vocabularies, terms that you are supposed to know. Uh, Thomas Jefferson as the third president of the United States Judiciary Act of 1801. John Marshall, Judicial Review, Radical. Radicals are those people that they have extreme political positions. Federalists and Democratic Republicans. This slide starts with a new party come as the new a new party comes to power and it was the election of 1800s. This election was a contest between two parties as we uh, as I told you before with different ideas on how to control the government. On the left chart you can see the federalists uh, with their uh, characteristics and their opposite party with democratic republicans. Federalists made Hamilton and Adams as their representatives and leaders. They and their supporters were mainly lawyers, merchants, manufacturers, and clergy. They believed in a strong national government. They believed in loose construction of constitution. They favored a national bank. They favored an economy based on trade. And they finally wore powdered hair or a wig bow tie, broad cattle's breeches and stockings and buckles on their shoes. They also additionally favored a modern lifestyle for America. On the opposite side, Jefferson and Madison were the leaders of Democratic Republicans. Their supporters were mainly farmers and urban workers. They believed in limited national government. They also believed in the street construction of constitution. Uh, standing on the opposite side, they opposed a national bank. They also favored agricultural economy, a kind of economy based on the uh, life of farmers, traditional life of Americans. And they wore loose hair, a neck, uh, a neckerchief, and other things that you see here like trousers and laces in their shoes. Uh, as you see, Federalists uh, led by, uh, were led by President John Adams. They thought the nation was going to be ruined by radicals, who uh, people who take extreme political positions. Actually, these people blame Democratic Republicans as the uh, radicals. Democratic Republicans, as I told you, were led by Thomas Jefferson. They thought that they were saving the nation from monarchy. Monarchy means a very strong national government that Federalists believed, and oppression. They also argued that the Aliens and Sedition Acts violated the Bill of Rights. As you see here, Republican Democra uh, Demo uh, Democratic Republicans, they, had, uh, they were under the... Uh, uh, representation of Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson received 73 votes in the Electoral College and Adams won 65 votes. So Jefferson won this election. Jefferson wasn't, but the problem here was that Jefferson was not the only candidate to receive 73 votes. So did Oregon Burr receive the same amount. A tie in the same party had to be broken. The Constitution says the House of Representatives will break a tie. Back then, the House of Representatives uh, was filled with the Federalists, exactly the opposite party. And uh, they also, the Federalists, were torn on which Democratic Republican to pick, Jefferson or Burr. But here we uh, see the main role of Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton uh, hated Thomas Jefferson. 
but he did not like Burr even more. For seven days the House voted 37 times without a winner. Finally, Hamilton's friend James A. Bayard persuaded several Federalists not to vote for Burr. On the 36th ballot, Jefferson received more votes and was elected president. Burr became his vice president. Here you see the, uh, the pictures of Jefferson and Burr. In this slide, Jefferson, we are, we are going to focus on Jefferson and democracy, his definition of democracy. How did Jefferson's policies differ from those of Federalists? Here we see the Jefferson as the president of uh, the United States, the third president. He urged political enemies to unite as Americans. He wanted both parties to unite and to work for America. He wanted, he wanted the United States to remain a nation of small independent farmers, a kind of traditional uh, America. He wanted to avoid having too much government, so he wanted to reduce the size of the government. And consequently, he reduced the number of federal employees and size of the military, as well as sought to end federalists programs. On the other hand, Congress controlled by democratic uh, uh, and consequently Congress controlled by the Repo Re democratic republicans let the aliens and sedition acts end. Jefferson released prisoners convicted under these acts. He later and later Congress ended the unpopular whiskey tax which was imposed on the farmers in order to stop producing whiskey. He used money from tariffs and land sales to reduce the amount of money owed by the government. Jefferson and democracy. In the period, in the time of Jefferson, he had a serious problem with the courts. Adam appointed, back before Jefferson, Adam appointed as many Federalist judges as possible between the election of 1800 and Jefferson's inauguration. Inauguration, if you remember, is the start of the uh, official work. Uh, so uh, between these two dates, uh, the, uh, the judges were appointed. And uh, under, this was done under the Judiciary Act of 1801. Supreme Court judges are appointed for life. It means that they are going to work up until their death, and therefore Federalists controlled the courts. Under Chief Justice John Marshall, the Supreme Court upheld federal authority and strengthened federal courts. In 1803, Marshall affirmed the principles of judiciary review. But what is judiciary review? It is the final authority of Supreme Court on the meaning of the Constitution. We are done with the first section of chapter 10. This chapter is a very uh, easy chapter. You, you may have some uh, very uh, small and easy questions from the terms that are referred in the beginning of this lesson. So I expect all of you to cover the terms in details. Thank you so much and hope to see you in class. Goodbye.